Place Called Perfect, Chapter 6, School Rules. After a restless night hidden under her duvet, Violet got up early the next morning and went downstairs to have breakfast. In the kitchen, her father was half asleep at the table, leaning over some papers. He sat up quickly, gathering his notes as she walked in. You're up early, pet, he said, almost knocking over a cold cup of tea. I couldn't sleep, she replied. The words were brief, but it was a relief to speak to him after such a long silence. Me neither, Eugene smiled warmly. What are you doing? Violet asked. Just research for work, he said, packing the pages away under his notepad. Is it for the archers? He nodded and pushed his chair back from the table. Would you like some cereal, pet? Dad, Violet said. Do you like the archers? Of course, pet. They're my bosses. It's just, well, there's something strange about them and this place. Don't you think Mam is acting a little weird? Violet, don't say that about your mother. It's just the stress of the move. You've been hard on this place since we got here. Give it a chance, he snapped. For the second time in not even a day, there was anger in his voice. What was it with adults? Last night, he'd sounded like he wasn't sure about this town either. I hate it here, Dad. I hate this place. I never wanted to move here. You made us, she roared, storming from the room. Violet, get back here this minute. His tone was terrifying, and even though she wanted to be brave and walk away, she turned around and edged back into the doorway. Don't you ever speak to me like that again. I am trying to make a life for us here. I know it's not easy to move at your age, but you have to give this place a chance. At my age, I'm not a baby. I have given Perfect a chance, but I hate it. I hate it. I have no friends and you and Mam are acting weird. Then last night I couldn't sleep because there was someone in my room. I wasn't even going to tell you because I knew you wouldn't believe me. What do you mean, someone in your room? He looked alarmed. I heard a voice, Dad. It was a boy. He talked to me. Violet, it's just your imagination again. It's a new house. Look, pet, we're all trying to find our feet here. You'll make lots of new friends at school today, and soon you'll forget we ever had this fight. No, I won't, Dad. You never listen to me. I wish I'd never started talking to you again. Violet screamed and ran from the kitchen. This time she didn't turn back, though her dad called her name. She sprinted up the stairs, slammed her door and flung herself onto the bed. For a while her dad clattered around in the kitchen below. Then the front door banged, the car roared to life and he was gone. Violet cried into her sheets loud enough so her mother would hear. She wanted her mum to give her a hug and whisper that everything was okay, like she would have, would have before perfect. But her mum never came and Violet got ready for her first day of school by herself. A grey skirt, shirt and jumper rested on a hanger that swung off the end of her bed. The local school uniform. She got dressed, sat on the duvet and pulled up her grey socks before sticking her feet into her polished black shoes. She walked over to the mirror and sighed. She was colourless. Her mother had warned her to brush her hair so, in an effort to brighten up her look. She took a purple and pink and yellow scrunchie from the drawer, brushed her hair as neatly as she could and tied it up, then went back downstairs. Were you fighting with your father this morning, Violet? Her mother asked, joining her in the kitchen. No, Violet answered, her voice teary. Are you okay, dear? She raised her red-rimmed eyes to meet her mother's. I'm fine. Oh, good, her mother smiled, oblivious. I've made you some ham sandwiches and a bun for lunch. Now brush your hair, Violet. I don't want you looking a mess in front of all those other mothers. I did brush it. 
her mother tutted, then grabbed a brush from the windowsill and proceeded to yank at Violet's head. Her tears welled again as her mother took the coloured bands out, replacing them with a single grey scrunchie. They walked in silence down Splendid Road, past the Archer Brothers Spectacle Makers Emporium onto Edward Street, and then turned right towards the school. The street went uphill a little and Violet panted as she followed her mother's march. Soon they came to a halt outside a large grey stone building set back a little from the road. The school roof was pointy at both ends like two witches' hats. The entrance door was high and pointed too, making the place look more like a church than a school. Violet shivered. The playground was full of children waiting in neat rows for the bell to ring. Every child was dressed perfectly in the same grey uniform. None of the children were talking, but some smiled politely as Violet, at Violet as she passed. See, her mother whispered as they walked under the imposing entrance and into the hallway. You're going to make great friends here. Friends for life. They were directed to the principal's office and... After a quick and formal introduction, Violet said goodbye to her mother and followed the principal to her classroom. She stood nervously at the front of the class as the smart-suited principal whispered something to her new teacher. In her old school, the, mi the, the minute the teacher was distracted, Violet and her classmates would talk, pass notes and sometimes even switch seats. Here, it was different. The students sat in silence. They didn't even smile. The teacher, Mrs Moody, was short, round and granny old. She wore the usual gold rimmed glasses, a blue skirt, red cardigan and a white shirt. She had the perfect shine. Violet dear, she said as the principal left the room, take a seat, there is one at the back. Violet walked to the end of the room and took a seat between a girl with pigtails and a curly haired boy. They both smiled as she sat down. Now class, say hello to Violet. Hello, Violet, the class responded on cue. Violet blushed. Then Mrs Moody asked her to stand up and tell the class about her life before perfect. Every student listened. No one chewed a pencil, chattered or fidgeted. When she'd finished, the teacher gave the class some work and came over to talk to Violet. Dear, she whispered, we have a few tests here that each new student has to take so we can tell where you fit. What do you mean? Violet asked. She didn't fit in anywhere. It's nothing to worry about. We just like to assess all our students to tell what standard you have reached and if you have any defects, I mean problems, we should be aware of. Oh no, Mrs Moody, I don't have any problems. Violet smiled as nicely as she could. I don't mean problems as such, dear. It's just in this school, we like to nurture the perfect student. Not all our pupils are perfect when they come to us. Take Michael over there, the teacher said, pointing to a blonde haired boy busy doing his maths. He was quite excitable when he first arrived. Couldn't sit still for a minute, but we soon worked out that out of him and now he's picture perfect. Oh, I can sit still, Violet insisted, disliking her new teacher's tone. I'm sure you can, Violet dear, but there are all sorts of afflictions students are burdened with. We've had some here who made up stories, some who doodled all day, others like Michael who couldn't sit still. The list goes on. You may have no problems at all, dear, but we do need to know. Now, it won't take long. Swiftly, Mrs Moody put a piece of paper onto Violet's desk and held a pencil out in front of her. Violet looked at the pencil, then back at her teacher, who smiled and nodded. Take it, dear. Violet reached up and took the pencil. Ah, left-handed. Thought as much, the teacher tutted as she walked away. Confused, Violet looked down at the paper on her desk. Question one, what is your name? 
She tried not to laugh as she filled in the empty box. This was easy. The questions got sillier. What was your first pet's name? Do you visit your grandmother a lot? Why would the school need to know these things? Then they got stranger. Have you ever felt the urge to run away from home? Do you question adults? She didn't know what to write and had only filled in a few answers by the time tea break was called. An old woman with white hair curled, curled tight to her head and wearing the usual glasses rolled a trolley into the classroom. A large silver canister with a huge Archer's Tea logo stuck to the side rested on top of the trolley. Everyone set down their pencils and took a mug from their desk. They queued up in an orderly fashion and pulled a lever on the side of the canister, filling their mugs with tea. Did you not bring a mug, Violet? Mrs Moody asked, standing above her. Take this one. She thrust a mug into Violet's grip before she even had time to respond. We love our tea, imperfect. Violet looked down at the navy mug in her hand. Portraits of the Archer brothers smiled out at her, sitting over the words, Archer's tea is perfect tea. She wanted to throw the mug out of the window, but thought better of the idea, seeing as tea was about the only thing she actually liked in perfect. She finished her mug and resumed her work. The questions got even stranger. Have you ever had a secret? If so, give details. Do you like art? This includes drawing, painting, singing, writing or any other form of expressing oneself. Violet's head was a muddle by the time lunch was called and she couldn't wait to get outside and play. She followed a line of pupils from the classroom out into the playground. A grey stone wall marked the edges of the playground and screwed to it the whole way round was a long wooden bench. All the pupils walked uniformly over to the bench, took a spot, opened their lunch boxes and began to eat. The sun was shining but everything was grey. There was no life in the yard, no screaming, shouting or laughing, which was normal in Violet's old school. Nobody ran, there was no football, no tig, nothing. She tried not to think about her old friends and what they were doing right now as she took a free spot on the bench. Once they'd finished eating, kids began to close their lunch boxes and stand up. One group appeared to be marking out a hopscotch course on the ground, while another group took out a long skipping rope. Maybe they did play games after all. Hello, Violet. She was just closing her lunchbox and looked up to see a red-haired girl from her class. I'm Beatrice, the girl said. Would you like to join us for a game of skip? Oh, um, yeah, I'd love to. Beatrice smiled and Violet and her new friend walked over to the group of girls that had formed around the long skipping rope. Has everyone met Violet? Beatrice asked. She's new here, started today. Hello, Violet, the group said in unison, polite smiles resting on their faces. Who'd like to hold the rope first? Beatrice asked. Violet stepped forward, but the red-haired girl held up her hand. Not straight away, Violet. You have to learn how to swing the rope first. Violet blushed and stepped back into the comfort of the crowd. She knew how to hold a skipping rope. When the game started, each girl stepped into the rope and jumped exactly three times. There was no laughing or joking and the rules seemed very strict. When it came to Violet's turn, she jumped nervously in. The first two skips were great and she relaxed. To liven things up, she decided to try a trick she used to do in her old school for her third skip. The rope came round and she crossed her legs as it passed beneath her. Immediately the girl stopped swinging and everybody looked at Violet. That's not in the rules, Beatrice barked. I'm sorry, Violet stuttered. It's not in the rules, Violet, Beatrice repeated. If it is not in the rules, then you can't do it. Why do you think, what do you think rules are for? 
Violet didn't know what to say as she looked around at the angry faces. Suddenly, Beatrice swung the rope again. It's okay, Violet, she smiled as though nothing had happened. Maybe you should sit this round out to watch. Violet did as she was told, finding a spot a little way back from the game. The girls jumped like robots until the bell rang. Then everything stopped immediately and the pupils filed back silently into their classrooms. School seemed really strange here. This town definitely wasn't perfect for children. Back inside, Violet continued with the questionnaire. Why would the school need to know if she'd ever had an imaginary friend or if she daydreamed a lot? She was just writing that daydreaming was one of her favourite things when the pencil slipped from her hand onto the wooden floor. It was out of reach so she slid off her seat and under the desk. As she stretched for the pencil something etched into the bottom of her desk caught her eye. William Archer was here, full of life and nothing to fear. She turned awkwardly in the small space and ran her fingers over the roughly scrawled words. It was that name again, William Archer. It was weird that the Archers or her parents had never mentioned William. He had to be cool. Edward or George would never scratch their names into a plaque or a desk. No one imperfect would. She crawled back out and took her seat. Just as she was about to start writing again, the silence hit her. Slowly she looked up. For the second time that day, all eyes were on her. You've decided to rejoin us, I see, Mrs Muddy Grim Moody grimaced. Oh, I dropped my pencil, Violet said, holding it up. And you didn't think to ask permission? Oh, I, um, permission to pick up a pencil? That sounded stupid. Rules, Violet, the teacher snapped. Beatrice told you about the skipping incident, and now this. I'm afraid I will have to call your parents. Call her parents? Because of a silly skipping trick and a lost pencil? But... I just... No buts, Violet. You are on thin ice as it is, my dear. Now, class, back to work. Mrs Moody smiled. Violet sat in shock for a while before returning to the questions. What's the first thing that comes to mind when you think of perfect? Angrily, she drew a dog poo. She had to get out of this town. End of chapter 6